Hello everyone and welcome back to the Jake Hill Racing YouTube channel where today we are going to start the next part of my YouTube channel which is the Garage and Workshop Tour Series and we're going to be visiting some of the most prestigious I guess and awesome garages and workshops that I've had the pleasure of working with and hopefully ones that even I uh, haven't worked with yet but we're going to start off where it all started for me which is Bill Rawls Classic Cars and they are an Austin Healey specialist and probably the world's best builders for Austin Healey's and I made my debut with them in my historic career in 2016 sharing with good friend uh, Jack Rawls um, the son of Bill Rawls so yeah, it's a, it's a great place to start this workshop tour um, series of mine that we're going to get going with and yeah, I hope you enjoy. So I'm joined by Jack Rawls, who has been one of my best friends for a number of years now. It's all your fault that uh, Hannah, my fiance, it you know, yeah. it's all your fault it because fault. you invited me to that party yeah. and look what's happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but anyway, we are here uh, at his dad's um, workshop, Bill Rawls Classic Cars, and they are the best Austin Healey producer, I guess. Yeah, I suppose we're road and performance specialists. Yeah. So uh, we do work on all classic cars, but yeah. um, but mainly specialise in Austin Healey's. Yeah. Perfect. And how long have you been working for your dad? I've been here about six years now. Wow. And uh, yeah, obviously we met when I was racing in Ginetta Juniors. Yeah. And then I went into some work somewhere else and then I came into the family business. Yeah. It's myself, my brother, my dad. Yeah. Um, my mum and, uh, you know, employees as well, which are like a close-knit team. Yeah, it's perfect. And uh, yeah, we, we, we do anything for road cars and race cars, really. Yeah, and I've had a look around and, you know, the cars are beautiful, aren't they? Mm, you yeah, know, you, yeah. you do such a good job. I mean, obviously, I know how good a job you guys do. I Thank made you. my historic debut with yeah. you. You tend to forget that sometimes. I do forget, tend to forget that sometimes, but uh, make no mistake, 2016, yeah. uh, Silverstone National. I do remember I said, Jake, do you fancy going racing this old car? And you're like, oh, oh I'm not sure. And time. now look, yeah. and, you know, we're filming this just ahead of um, the Goodwood members meeting. Yeah. And... You know, my historic career's taken off. Your historic career's doing really well. Mm. Um, you know, yes, it's always pretty much driving Heelys, yeah. but it's what you love, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. And um, I'm quite good at it as well. So. You are, yeah. <laughs> we tend to be all right at that bit. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the driving bit's yeah, the easy yeah, bit. That's it, yeah. Cool. Well, do you mind showing us round? Absolutely, yeah. Come and have a look and see what we do. Let's do it. So welcome to Bill Rose Classic Cars. Over the past 15 years, the business has developed through many different phases, but the most recent phase is moving to our new facility here in Hampshire which has been here about two years now and it's really a one-stop shop for any service needed on your Austin Healey. So looking at this part of the workshop, this is the mechanical department. This is where we do all our servicing, refitting, any mechanical strip downs and builds up. There's many areas of the business and we'll have a look at those in a minute. We've got engine building here, machining, race preparation, fabrication and one of the unique features of this building is above our heads there's about 60 cars which is really the secret to making sure that cars stay inside and they're secure at all times. Let's have a look at the engine building room. So we can offer a full engine rebuild for any six cylinder or four cylinder Austin Healey, but we do also do other classic cars too. Here you can see a head for an Austin Healey 104 that's come off as part of a standard rebuild. In here we build race engines and road engines alike. We also do all of our gearboxes in here too. So here you can see this is a six cylinder Austin Healey gearbox now stripped down. There's not many places now, really not only in the UK, but in the world, they're actually offering an end to end solution. And because of this, we do find that jobs come in from literally all over the world, which is crazy to think for our little family business. Um, but it's nice when you get a call from you know, the UAE or Australia or America. But then most importantly, we look after anyone and everyone who lives just down the road that maybe has a flat tire. So not only being Austin Healey specialist, but we, we, I won't say we're a Jaguar specialist, but we do work on a lot of Jaguars, MGs, Triumphs, and a lot of other things. This Mark II Jaguar, they're kind of a bit of a forgotten model, really. Um, the E-Types and the XK series often get a lot of you know, rave reviews, but the Mark II certainly has a place. It's a great, comfy touring car, a bit sporty, and uh, it's actually what the likes of Mike Hawthorne drove back in the day. 
Um, similar, well, same engine as the Jaguar E-Type, 3.8. And this exact car is what they call the Holy Grail. So it's a 3.8 manual overdrive car. Uh, and it's a car we've looked after for many years. We've done a full engine rebuild on it, uh, bare metal repaint, and it often comes back for a general servicing. But absolutely fantastic, good value for money, classic car. So an important part of the business, but I guess it's a bit of fun as well really, is the motorsport side of things. So here we have an Austin Healey 100S. Now they only produced 50 of these originally. They were like a homologation specification car. Now luckily we have one here and we have another one over there as well. So we're very lucky to have two in the workshop at the moment. But I guess one of the important things about the business is making sure that Bill himself is still on the tools. And here he is preparing this 100S just before we go after Goodwood members meet. Good old Bill, yeah, he's still working away. He is. What's, I, what's, I he, do, what's he doing don't give there, him any break. Yeah, no break. Do you okay, supply so lots of cups of tea, though? Plenty of cups of tea. Yeah. They often get left around the place, actually. Oh, do is, they? Yeah. As supplied by Castrol. As supplied Castrol. by Castrol, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you <laughs> very much. Hashtag ad. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment, we're just adjusting the, um, the clutch operation on this Healy 100S, yeah. so it's a bit fierce. So we're just gonna, there's, there's lots of, this is a mechanical clutch, it's not work, it doesn't work through hydraulic systems. So there's a lot of mechanical levers and if they're not quite set properly, which they are at the moment, then it becomes really fierce. So obviously worrying if you're gonna try and get it off the line um, to stall it. Um, we're gonna go and have a look at the fabrication side of things now, which is where my brother works and he's incredibly skilled with his hands. So I look forward to showing you what we do. So here we are in the fabrication side of the workshop, the noisy bit really. This is where, well, Charlie would say, my brother, the real work happens. Now in here we've got many different restorations from Frog Eye Sprites, XK150 and of course lots of Austin Healy's. We're proud to say that we do the whole process here, so all the fabrication work, uh, we have all the machines we need and obviously, importantly, the skilled staff to do that and long-term staff as well. So a tight neat group of people. Now Greg here is working on a Frog Eye Sprite at the moment, which has undergone a lot of work, um, mainly because what we struggle with is second time restoration. So the cars now are being restored for the second time, they're getting to 50, 60 years old, and the first restoration was poor. So this has had to have a whole new back end reconstructed, it was welded in the wrong place previously. Um, but really getting there now. The whole restoration process is around two and a half to 3,000 hours, so a hugely time consuming project. Um, and after metal work, it will then go through to the bodywork department. So interestingly, this is actually the car that started it all. So about late 80s, 1980s, uh, Dad, Bill, he was working on VW Beetles and that was what he was sort of specialising in. Um, and he bought this Austin Healey because he'd always loved one. He'd helped out a, a garage as a little boy and a, and a Healey came in and, and loved it from that moment. Well, he bought this Healey in the late 80s and thought what we'll do is we'll build a nice picnic car for the family to go out in. So it's completely stripped down, just as a chassis, the repairs are being completed, and he thought, well surely it's a good time to put a roll cage in it. I mean, that's logical, right? A bit of man maths there. So this picnic car, we didn't actually end up going out for picnics you know, in the countryside, we ended up going to racetracks. So we had picnics at Brands Hatch, Alton Park, Cadwell, and we followed this round as a family for years, and they're some of the best memories for myself and my brothers um, looking after this car. Now, when I was old enough, I then obviously got the opportunity to race it and uh, I've just been hooked ever since. But this came really for the whole business, started with this. Um, as Bill was restoring it, he was calling suppliers and finding out that they were really busy and thought, do you know what, actually Austin Healey seemed like a thing to specialise in. And here we are, 35 years later, and we've never looked back. This is the car that I first raced with you, isn't it? So Absolutely, yeah. This is Silverstone, the, This it? is the 2016 car. Um, She's got a few marks. Now, I, this isn't my doing, I don't think. This is, this is Bill, this is. This is Bill, this is Bill, yeah, <laughs> bless her. So what exactly is going on with the car now, Jack? Okay, so, what, so why is it in here, what's, it, what's going yeah, on? So, I mean, obviously, you know, 25 years of racing, yeah. she's had, she's had a few time. accidents. You yeah. know, um, she gets all, used properly. All thanks to... No, no. no. That's good Thankfully, then. <laughs> I've never actually damaged her. That's why she likes me. Um, but no, she's raced properly, raced hard. I guess for, for maybe some of your followers that don't know as well, the era of these cars, yeah. this is 1962. Yeah. This is not a sort of a modern, you know, modificate, modified car. Yeah. This is literally as they raced back in the day. Yeah. So we've got cross ply tires, lever arm dampers, the rear springs are just cart springs. Um, there is no modern technology on this thing at all. Um, so real, what they call, seat of your pants driving. Yeah. Now, obviously you had your first taste of historic motorsport in this car. I did. I mean, I remember you coming in just laughing, 
it, it honestly is the best fun I ever had. And that's what hooked me, you know, that's what, that's what got me loving historic motorsport. And I tell you what, it's actually the tyre that does a lot of it. Mm. Do you not agree? Just yeah, because, yeah. like, it moves around so much yeah. and no but one understands. But it's also forgiving, though, because you, with, like, a modern tyre, like a yeah. slick or a cut slick, yeah. you've got a certain amount and then it, it snaps. snaps you know? Yeah, but and this really lets you sort of four-wheel drift the car. Yeah everywhere and yeah. unfortunately for people that can't drive yeah that's the only way to drive them quickly it is, is yeah. to have the thing moving yeah. all the because time because you haven't got that ability to set them up no so you know you've got really rudimentary sort of technology yeah and so really right. and the, the only way is the to the suspension get them going. isn't isn't you know it's not modern no, and no. so therefore you haven't got the forgiveness yeah. that you're used to with a modern car and that's why you've got to just throw it in Having and, said and that go though, for it. From a setup perspective, as, as a business as well, even though it is old technology, we still do treat them like modern race cars. For so sure. They're all corner weighted, you know, obviously set up properly. This isn't just old cars, you know, bumbling around a track. Having a this bit is, of fun, yeah. This has gone from like 115 brake horsepower to like 280 brake horsepower. So it's a yeah. fully modified engine. Yeah. And it rev through to 7,000 RPM. But I've, in 1962, I mean, That's really the good. one thing I remember most about it all was actually just how nice the engine was, mm, you know. Mm. It was so, so smooth, but also the noise. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna try and find a clip and put it in now. That was there pretty you go. good. That it? was yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, we're going to have a little look around now, see the rest of, of the workshop, and go from there. We've got really exciting plans for this car. Now, this year, for the first time, no one really knows this yet, even in the workshop, the car will actually be going to America. Yeah. We're going to be going to Road America, which is <laughs> wicked. So That is literally um, like a dream come it is, true. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. So, and it's so and when, when's that going to happen, That's Jack? September time. September. Yeah. So we've built a car for an American-based customer, and uh, both the cars are going to head out together. Mate, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's going to be good. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, stay tuned, guys, because I'm sure Jack is going to be posting about this yep. on his socials. Yeah, So go ahead and give Jack himself a follow, as well as obviously Bill. Um, and yeah check out when they take this thing to America because that's going to be absolutely awesome. Yeah, it's going to be good. Okay, so it's kind of the running joke. I, I mean, my role here is that I do look after the running of the business and all the inquiries and finances and marketing. So, you know, I do, I do do things here, but I don't have a proper job, as I would say. <laughs> Here's my brother, Charlie. He is uh, fully geared up. He's just been wax oiling this, uh, this Triumph. Charlie, Charlie boy. Oh. How are you? Grubby. Grubby. <laughs> doing, doing some real work. What have you, you been up to, mate? What's well, been going on? We've been doing a little, a little bit of everything at the moment. Obviously, yeah. Um, we enjoy the restoration side of the business, but every now and then you have to get stuck in and get dirty. So um, this one's just come in. Rear outriggers were completely rotten. I don't know how the boat drove it here. <laughs> Literally, the rear suspension was like hanging on to like, bits of rust. Oh, that's mm. no good, is it? So these sort of jobs almost come in and they sort of force their way in front of the restorations because they need to be put back on the road otherwise yeah they can't they, you know around, you so. i suppose you know even as yourself you can't just let someone drive out the door no. with it literally no. hanging on by a thread no, you know right. so yeah you have um, a duty of care yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. we like yeah. to get stuck in and do all the big jobs these little jobs they come in we get them up on the ramp end up cutting the whole thing apart and then <laughs> Um, welding bits back together again. So, so I mean, today though, you're down and dirty doing some wax oiling, Just but, doing it all, you, know. but you look um, great, mate. But yeah. you, well, taking the glory, yeah. But Charlie is uh, an incredible metal worker. Um, uh, he probably won't say it himself, but um, the things he can make is really, really cool. Um, so from alum full aluminium hard tops and body panels, yeah. um, TIG welding, you know, any type of welding really. Um, and you just Charlie really oversees this side of the business, the restoration and, and the guys that work in here. Um, so this is your baby, so, yeah, really. Yeah, we've got um, a few skilled guys with us, haven't we? Obviously, Greg and Dan, they're um, skilled in their own rights. And then Ed's our little apprentice, he's getting on nicely. Yeah. So, um, so really, something that Bill's really um, keen on is making sure that the next generation is looked after. So yeah. we have uh, we have a you know, good, we don't have an apprenticeship scheme, but we have um, apprentices, usually from Bista Heritage, and they come through with us. And um, obviously, we want people to stay on with us for as, 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 long as, they, as long as they want to. But a few employees have gone on and started their own business, which actually is great to see. You know, also, so like in this industry, there's no sort of one way of doing anything. So yeah. um, trying to find employees is always difficult because you sort of have your way of doing it. And they might come in and they might 
do it another way, it might be all right for them, but you might think, oh, I would have done it this way and that way. And trying to teach someone that already is stuck in their ways a little bit is quite difficult. So bringing yeah. up youngsters where you can teach them from scratch and you get it done the way you know you want it done, um, it does pay dividends in the end. It's just obviously a bit more time to start with. But yeah. Once, yeah. Uh, once the ball's rolling, then... Well, yeah, and it's, le it's learning the process, isn't it? You know, yeah. every workshop has a different process, oh, a yeah. different way of going about it. Um, this is very unique, very specific. Uh, I know there's obviously lots of historic garages yeah. all over the country that specify something, but you know, they are a handcrafted bit of kit. Mm -hmm. And so learning those skills to do it properly, yeah. you know, that's a big difference, isn't it? Yeah. And I think again, from this industry, as we all know, everyone that loves cars, the first thing you do if you don't know how to do something is you look on the internet. Yeah. There's so many people that tell you different ways of doing stuff on the internet, but until you get stuck in and just find your mojo and start doing it the way you want to do it, yeah. um, and it's always, uh, always someone that tells you the best way, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's Mega. It. Yeah. Well, enjoy cracking on, well, Charlie, and thanks for talking to us. It was my favourite Friday morning, <laughs> you know, getting covered in wax all. But, you look uh, great, mate. You look fantastic. Well, Jake and I are going to do something important now, like yeah. have a coffee or something. And exactly. <laughs> right, welcome to the paint booth. So uh, this is where we paint all the cars and any components that need to be painted. And Dan, Hi, Dan. Here Hi. is our full-time painter. And how long have you been with us, Dan? Four years, five years? Seven years. Seven years. Seven, Seven years. years. Seven yeah. years. Yeah. That was like Ed the other day and I said, how long have you been here? Six months? You know I've been here over a year. <laughs> <Time flies. laughs> it does. Time flies when you're having fun. So Dan came to us with, just say no, experience Zero really. Experience, yeah. yeah. And, um, and you've also, see Dan, you've just allowed, you well Jack, you've just let Dan paint your yeah. crash helmet yeah. for Goodwood this weekend. Absolutely. So Dan is a fantastic painter for us here, um, but he has also got a side hustle. He's uh, starting to do some uh, painting helmets, which is great. And uh, Crash we can, I'm sure we. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, he's painted mine, and it looks absolutely. It awesome. does look good. Looks I'll, good. Yeah, I'll give so, you credit. That yeah. it does look very yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, it's uh, but it's it's tricky, isn't it? There's lots of Pretty there's lots yeah. of techniques, and going from painting a car to painting helmets is quite different, isn't it? Yeah, it's really? very different. It's very yeah, different, yeah. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Plus, and what yeah. are you doing now, Dan? So what are we what are we painting? What are we prepping? Uh, so in here. There was a brake fluid that got loose and corroded all the paint up in this arch. Oh, cool. So okay. yesterday, stripped it all back, primed it, and now today I'm rubbing it down. Just ready did, to doing a bit of prep. Now, this car is quite interesting. Um, it was owned by one of the guys that drove a lot of the special tests back in the day, like at Bonneville and things like that with Carol Shelby and Donald Healy. His name was Roy Jackson Moore. This was his everyday road car. And a couple of years ago, um, we restored it for the, the new owner, who's a great Healy enthusiast. But what's cool about this car is that it's his only car. So he's got a motorbike, a motorhome, and an Austin Healy. The, so this is it? And he's, since restoration, he's done about 30,000 miles in this car. Wow. Um, and which, when did you, so did you restore it? Yeah, last year. Last year? No, 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 no. Okay. no about three years ago. Oh, so he does okay, about 10,000 cool. miles a year. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just great that you can use these cars every day if you want to. Yeah. Um, originally, they were life for seven years. That's all they thought they'd last, seven years. So here we are, 60 years later. And they're doing all right. Absolutely. With a bit of love and TLC. Yeah. Well done, Dan. Keep up the good work. <laughs> cool. Right. I think now we'll show you upstairs. Now, this is the really good bit, I'd say. Let's go. Okay, here we are on the mezzanine floor. Now, we're about 20, 25 feet up in the air above the main workshops, and this is really the secret to efficiency here at Bill Rules Classic Cars. Now, these jobs, they often have a lot long lead time with certain parts. Sometimes we make, might get halfway through a job, then we need a part and we have to wait you know, four weeks for something. So this is a great area where vehicles can come and get lifted above the workshop and just stay safe and inside. But this is a good chance. Among the Austin Healy's, there's some peculiar things as well. Um, Let's have a little look, what we got? So we've got things from a 2CV. Everyone's favorite French car. A Frog Eye Sprite. A Hillman Imp or Sunbeam Stiletto. That's really cool. I do love one of these. Rear engine, that's, that's just having an engine rebuild. Okay, I'm cool. Are you, doing, are you doing the rebuild? Yeah, we do that all here. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just had delivered what we're moving into now, not, not by any sort of conscious decision, but just by um, demand, uh, modern classics. People find it really hard to find somewhere that will restore up and coming classics, you know, 205 GTIs, Mark 1 Golf GTIs, this is a Talbot Sunbeam, um, you know, any sort of hot hatch like that. Vauxhall Chevette we have here as well. This is lovely. Um, so it looks know, these, quite clean. Have you painted it? We, we have painted it. The customer has put it together and then it's come to us for, um, sort of for some final finishing. But this might be quite interesting um, for some more sort of classic car enthusiasts. Um, 
What is this, Jack? So I've this never seen one of these. Is a lovely Austin A90 Atlantic. So look at the funky line. Yeah, bless it. I mean, it, it's hit the ugly branch on the way down. <laughs> it has. No, it, I actually don't reach No, no, it's true. It's true. No, I, I say what I say about this is that. The design of it is so Art Deco. You can see that through um, you know, this sort of chrome strips and the, and the single light. What they were trying to do at Austin was something completely different, or they were trying to appeal to the American market. Now you're looking at just after the Second World War, um, and I'm sure that these designs were probably from pre-war. So you've got like an Art Deco design, and this is what was gonna take America by storm and be the answer to Austin's prayers, really, to try and sell some more cars. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately for us, it didn't sell. But they had made thousands of engines, front suspension, steering, gearboxes, rear axles, the lot. It was all sitting in a warehouse. And basically, Healy came up with a design, Donald Healy, and he had this beautiful sports car, but no running gear to put in it. And Austin had all this running gear and no beautiful sports car. So they came together, allegedly overnight, at the Earls Court Motor Show to create the Austin Healy. And that ran with all the same components as this. So although this looks completely alien, is actually very familiar to us. That's very, very cool. Uh, that is a nice bit of trivia and, and just general info. I, yeah. First of all, I didn't even know what the car was, but to hear the story about how the Austin Healey was created, that's pretty special. Yeah, and um, again, some different things here. So we have a Peugeot under here, which is really pretty actually. Peugeot 404. That is lovely. Um, I know you can't see much under the no, sheets. No, I've only seen a couple of those before, but um, yeah, nice big kit. Alfa Romeo's. Fiat. Is this broken down by any chance? <sighs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good old Alpha. <laughs> That's right. Long may it continue. Uh, yeah. It's got some lovely E-types. Yeah. So this one's been up here for a while. It needs a good clean. It and It's going to come into the workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and look at all the look at all the shrouds as well. We've got. You know, both they, sides, they are yeah. both yeah, yeah all around. Yeah. This storage facility upstairs. So what else have we got here, Jack? This looks this looks like a race car to yep. me. Yeah, absolutely. So this is again an Austin Healey FIA race car, and um, one we built about three years ago now, and we look after it for a customer. Um, this so, is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, this is all Charlie's work, really. So we were saying about his skills. This hard top here is handmade out of aluminium. So originally they were fiberglass, um, really hard to get hold of. So Charlie's actually wheeled one out of aluminium. Um, which all fits really nicely. It does, doesn't um, it? I mean, I've, se I've seen Charlie's work, you know, it it's hard to explain just how much effort, precision goes into... Yeah, care and, as well. And care, yeah, 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 and into making, yeah. you know, these things continue, but also, <clears throat> like you say, restoring and making new parts and stuff like that. You yeah. know, I mean, look how good it is. It's literally brand new, yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah. Charlie Boy does do some good work. He does. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. So this is the man himself, Bill Rawls. Here he is. <laughs> We've been mates for ages, haven't we, Bill? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and um, you know, you definitely build, in my opinion, the best Heelys I've ever do. seen. That's it. Yeah. And as you guys can see, you know, they do an amazing job of it. But you know, tell us a bit about how it all really started, and you know, how you've ended up where you are now. Well, it's a long story, really. But you know, a uh, little boy, a 13-year-old boy, I was when I saw my first Healy. <laughs> And the garage near my mum and dad's house, so I always loved it. Yeah. Um, and then I became an engineer and did that. And then when I finished my... Well, that's the point. You know, Dad, Bill, he worked at Zeus Fasteners. You know those little turnbuckle yeah, fasteners yeah, on yeah. race cars and yeah. things like that? Yeah, yeah. So it was a tool press toolmaker. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, but uh, tool making, it was great, but it wasn't really going when I wanted to go. Yeah. So... You always had a passion for oh, cars, for yeah. Cars, yeah. And, uh, and then I left engineering and set up on my own. Uh, a bit of a bold move, really. Uh, just jumped in at both feet. Uh, and then it was just sort of went from there. But what really turned the corner was when I bought my Healy, which is now a race car, as a wreck. That's, that's the one that uh, me and Jack raced in 2016. Yeah, so it, yeah. yeah, really cool car. And then it was a case of finding bits for it. And I was ringing around people, all the Healy people, and they were all really busy. And I thought, well, this is quite a good thing to do, you know? Yeah. So I jumped in again with both feet and it was a huge learning curve. It took a number of years and also, it's very hard to break into a market when there's leading people anyway. Yeah. So I was always, a, always a, sort of the, the new boy on the block. Yeah. But gradually you turn it around and, and through dedication and the passion of it, you know, you learn the trade. And I think specialising in one make was 
probably the best thing we ever did. Yeah. But we do other stuff, you know, we do Jags, yeah. and Yeah, and, and I've seen, you know, Jack was telling me about some of the modern classics that are coming in now, yeah. the Golfs and, yeah. or, you know, all that sort of stuff that in Mark 1 Golfs, yeah, you know. That, that way, yeah, yeah. And, and as a business, so you've got to be agile to sort for of sure. see that and not yeah. just be stuck, you know, we specialise, but also keep your, your horizons yeah. broad yeah. as well. Ultimately, you're a restoration company. Yes, yeah. the Heelys are your heart and soul, but, you yeah, know, they, there's, there's, I mean, there's a bit to it as I well. Mean, with the Heely stuff, we're worldwide now. Yeah. There's no doubt about it, you know. I mean, and it's it's just quite humbling that people come from all over the place to us. To have but, the car built here. You know, yeah. And the, the ethos is do a decent job, you know. Yeah. And, and people come back. Yeah. So, and then gradually we've been, been renting workshops for years. I sold the first business 17 years ago and worked from home for. Yeah, well, I've, I've seen the home workshop. Yeah. You know, when I first met you both, yeah. You know, I remember coming to your home workshop and it was just, you know, it, it's a big garage, yeah. but it is just a home garage, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. workshop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's gone from having, you know, three or four projects on at a time in there That's right, yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's a bit of luck and a bit, of, a bit of judgment. I mean, this place, we've been trying to buy a place for years and this came on the market about three years ago in a bit of a derelict state. Yeah. And we looked at it and we said, it's now or never, you know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so we, we again. And this is again. forever, isn't it? This yeah, place, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a beautiful place. You know, you know uh, it's for the boys really as well. Yeah. You know. uh, there's still stuff to do here. There will, you know, there will be. But uh, we've given ourselves a five-year plan to try and get it all done in five years. We're yeah. three years into it, and. Uh, I mean, it looks mega. You know, yeah, I, I've been so impressed by it, and I've yeah. seen some amazing workshops. So, yeah. you know, it's um, state of the art. Thanks, and yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what we're trying to do. What's your, what's your daily driver at the moment then? That's pretty worth looking at. Oh, that. what have we got? Mine, the old Westie. Yeah, that, the old Westie over there. That's, that's pretty there. cool, isn't it? Yeah, she, um, that's been in, I've had that for 20 years now and it's just been taking the back stand. So this year I decided I'd get it on the road. It does look, I saw up close earlier, it does still have like, it's got like blemishes in, well, in the paint, you know, it's, it's still... I'm not going to do too much to it. You know, we've, we've done, I've done the chrome. And it's quite nice leaving it a little bit scruffy in places because it, uh, it gives it a bit of character. Yeah, I mean, you look, Again, it's all Healy stuff. So all, yeah, yeah, it's so all Healy, you know, Healy engine and things. So it's all yeah, familiar, you know? Yeah. I can see a cheeky side exit. Yeah, look, look at that. Exit, yeah. So the plan with it is going to be to... Um, it's to put a three litre engine in it. It's got a 2.6 of a set change gearbox yes. and a new carpet set. But uh, yeah, it's, that's, a, it's a bit of an ongoing project. It smells like an old car, yeah, yeah. but it is really, really cool. We had, you actually Does it run well? This. Yeah, it goes. It, really it well. runs well. You did, yeah. make, you did buy this because actually, a fun fact for you, Jake, which you might not know. Yeah. The first car to win what was the British Saloon Car Championship with. Oh, Jack Sears. Jack Sears, yeah, of course. Yeah, um, I was, was about to say that. Was, yeah. was, and it was, was one of these. Was one, I didn't so, actually know it was one of these. Yeah, so an Austin Westminster, but what they call the cow hips version, um, which is a short tail short tail. Yeah. And he had a, his was British Racing Green. Yeah. Uh, and I believe the first British Loon Car Championship was won. They drew on points. That's and true. And it was won through like a, a race off. It's true. Yeah. It was like a, it was literally like a, um, a couple of lap shootout. Yeah. And, that's when Jack Sears so won so it. So I bought yeah. this to, with a view to race it, but um, it's a one-owner car. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought, you know what? You can't do it to it. I couldn't rip it apart. No. So um, we All just right. put some so slightly wider rims on it. We're gonna, it's a bit of a fun car, really. I call it the pub car. That's mm. the brand. Yeah. yeah. And Jack, you're building quite something quite cool yep. that I know about in the workshop. Yeah, that's quite cool, yeah. But yep. we'll probably well, get onto that another, another time, that, another yeah. video yeah. on yeah. that. That is Do some burnouts. absolutely awesome. Yeah. But. Well, Bill, thank you so much for chatting to us no and sharing us round. It's been a real pleasure and look forward to more. Cheers, Jake. I've just seen in the foyer here of Bill Rules Classic Cars. Look, it's me. It's my Scalextric car. That's really cool. And it had, you know, your dad very kindly sponsored me for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. And in that year, 2020, um, it was on the rear door, look, the Bill Rules Classic Cars logo. Proud to rep. And, um, I, I yeah. think that's the thing though, it's like, it's amazing, in a business that you love, yeah. and you know, a business that um, you, can, you can grow, um, it's amazing what you can achieve, and you think, like, as a little kid, and I was playing with this electrics car, yeah. never ever thought that 100%. there'd be one with our, our logo on it. So, no, and I, and I never yeah. thought I would have my own electric car, and I've got four now. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, I mean, it, is, it is stuff like that. It's about it, but... childhood, <laughs> childhood <laughs> dreams. Sorry, mate, that's a proud moment for me. But no, this is really cool. Well, yeah. I think we've had an amazing time looking around the workshop, Jack. Yeah. 
Um, a huge, huge thank you, um, firstly to you, your brother, your dad, and all the guys here that are working flat out. No problem. And uh, yeah. Well, thank, th thanks for coming down because uh, yeah, we love watching you race and the things you can do with the car. It's, it's awesome. It's good. And yeah, we're going to go and have a nice time racing at Goodwood this weekend. We are. Um, but yeah, stay have tuned. You, have you got a date for your back tie dinner tonight? Uh, I have. In fact, you're my day. Hey. Hey, here we go. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. It's been a real, real pleasure uh, filming here and showing you around the Billboard's Classic Cars workshop. It's been a real, real treat. So, see you soon.